morning, dear friends, and welcome to this meditation moment. May the Holy Spirit guide you into the truth of God's word. Today, my meditation is based on a question based on Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Who is a committed Christian? This particular verse, in, in this particular verse, Jesus told the disciples, if anyone would like to come after me and follow me, let him deny himself and deny everything else and everyone else and take up his cross and follow me. A true Christian is not a patch up or a repaired material. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, a genuine true Christian is a new product. As the scripture says, if anyone is in Jesus Christ, he is a new creation. All the old things have gone. Everything is new. As a new creation, he vacates the old residence and shifted into a new house. Now Jesus Christ is the new house. The Lord wants to be your house. This change requires a total commitment. A commitment which will cost you your very life. It calls for a total surrender, which involves three things. And I would just like to mention these three things without giving much details of it. You can uh, meditate on it. And I am sure the Holy Spirit will speak to you. Number one, to be a committed Christian a person must die. Die to self. So a death is involved if you want to be a committed Christian and a follower of Jesus Christ. It also means denying yourself. To deny signifies Put aside or put off or annihilate. Annihilate what? Annihilate yourself. And very often it is the self in each one of us that creates all kinds of unnecessary problems for us and for others as well. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, this is exactly what Apostle Paul said, where a death is involved. I am crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And this makes you a committed Christian, a true disciple of Jesus Christ who follows him. The second thing to note is and understand is Christian commitment calls for an identification with, with the Christ. Christ in what? In his suffering? That's why Jesus himself said, take up your cross. A cross means suffering, which leads to death. A cross is a place of death through suffering. And that is the meaning of a Christ when he said, take up your cross and then follow me. And Paul understood its significance. And so he gave his self to be crucified.
A committed Christian must follow Christ no matter what the cost is. It involves surrendering of our will as Jesus Christ did. He had a human will. In his uh, entire life and ministry here on earth, he kept his human will under submission to his father. Never exercised his own will to do anything or to say anything. That is why he said, the words that I speak to you are not mine. I hear my father speaks and that I speak to you. He said concerning his work, the works that I do among you are not mine. I see my father works and then I come and do among you what my father does. What did he do with his own will? He kept his will under submission to his father's will. But once in his life, to accept that father's will seemed to be almost impossible and painful, so much pain and struggle. And at that moment, his human will cried out in the garden of Gethsemane. As he began to feel the burden of the sin of the entire humanity is beginning to fall upon his body with which he had to go to the cross. And then there would come a moment when he had to be separated from his father. Because for the father himself, it was not possible to look upon his son with a huge mountain of sin and its curses upon him. Not his own, but humanity. And what would have happened if he had pr stopped that prayer that he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane? Father, if it is possible, remove this cup from me. He prayed this in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was facing the cross. All the angels gathered around the throne of God Almighty in heaven. Waiting very anxiously, they were all silent. What would the father do? Will he grant his son his request? And what would have happened if God the Father granted his son's request and removed the cross from him? The entire humanity, my friends, would have been plunged into the darkness and abyss of hell without any hope for humanity's salvation. But today, when I think about it, as the angels of her time too feeling, would he grant his son his request? If he does, what would happen? But thanks be to God, it didn't happen. Immediately he prayed, Father, it is not my will, but your will be done. He submitted his human will to the will of the Father. And what was the definite and specific will of the Father for him? The cross. And from there, Jesus gladly went, carried his own cross, and laid himself upon the cross to be nailed to the cross. And he died, shedding his blood and breaking his body to provide you and me the way of salvation. And this, therefore, is the only way of salvation, my friends. 
There is no other way. Come to Christ. Submit yourself to him. And if you decide to be a follower and a disciple, this is exactly what you require to do. Submit your own will to the will of Jesus Christ for you. Let it cost you your life. But his name will be lifted up. And because Jesus was obedient to the Father's will, he, Father, also has highly exalted him after rising from the dead. And given him a name that is above all of the names, that is the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Hallelujah. And this day also is drawing near. When every knee shall bow before Jesus. He is alive to hear your prayer. Ready to come to you. And in you, change you. Make you a fruitful follower of Christ. For this, I pray that the grace of God will be granted to you. And you will enjoy the richness of his grace. Amen. Father, I pray for everyone who listened to this, that your spirit will continue to move upon their hearts and lives. And they too, like Jesus, will submit to their own will to the will of God the Father through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and enjoy the riches of your mercy and your grace, that they may be victorious, followers of Christ. Thank you. Hallelujah. We ask these mercies in Jesus' precious name. As you live your life today, enjoy his goodness. May the Lord bless you. Have a great and wonderful, victorious day. Amen.